Some words from the Gospel which is set for this um, eighth Sunday after Trinity. Uh, and the words are, taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples and the disciples gave them to the crowds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Welcome to this Sunday where we have another image about the way in which the Eucharist is the way in which the Church feeds itself, but only so that it can in turn nourish the world into which all Christian people are sent to bring about that life which we receive in the gift of communion. And as we are slowly beginning to regather, we all look forward to the day when we can eventually gather in greater numbers to be fed together in order to then go out together to be able to feed uh, the world in which we all live and work and spend our time. But first, let's open up our hearts and minds to receive the gift of God's uh, mercy by which our hearts and minds are uh, gently opened up to be able to receive that gift of grace from which uh, all good things flow. Let us pray. Jesus gives his church the means of salvation. In his merciful love, he pours out his forgiveness to all those who come to him in penitence and faith. So let us pray. When we have denied our real hunger for you, Lord have mercy. When we have shut out the cries of the poor, Christ have mercy. When we have not lived as those fed by your Son, Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in our goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. That's the prayer set for this particular Sunday. Lord God, your Son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so that Gospel reading, as we continue our journey through St Matthew's account of the Gospel, which we uh, made a brief reference to at the beginning of this uh, recording today. Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away, so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowd to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. 
And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, this um, wonderful account of the multiplication of the loaves, the way in which not simply those who are immediately gathered around Jesus, but all those whom those disciples go out and live amongst, has increasing relevance for the way in which the church in this period of its life is beginning slowly to regather in order to feed again and send again out into the world in which we all spend our time. There is an ancient phrase which I keep coming back to which really sums up the heart of what it is that we try to do with the gift of Christ's life that we receive which is expressed through feeding the bread and wine uh, of the Eucharist. And the phrase is become what you receive. Become what you receive. Now that at first might seem a little bit vague and a bit abstract, but we receive that powerful expression of Christ's own life in bread and wine, which he then asks us to take to ourselves, taking Christ's life to ourselves. So we receive um, that by which Christ asks us to be remembered by. So we're asking that really what we're taking to ourself, Christ's own life, begins to change who we are. So we're being called to become Christ-like, to become the bread of life, to feed those people amongst whom we live and work. And when we receive this bread, when we receive the celebration of the Eucharist itself, we know from our own experience that uh, a fresh vision of ourselves begins to uh, be opened and a vision for the world in which we live begins to be opened as we come and go day by day or week by week. That's why we use the phrase, uh, we become the image of Christ. We can't become Christ himself, but we can become the image and therefore we begin to become a bit more like who we receive. And therefore, we're asked to become people who who nourish the world into which we are sent. We're blessed at the end, not simply because we like being blessed, but because we're then sent to live out this life in the world in which we live. It doesn't just necessarily mean hands-on practical good works like the food bank, wonderful though they are, but it can also be the way in which our lives make it possible to enhance the quality of all relationships within our neighbourhoods. And from those relationships, wonderful things start to flourish and to grow. Uh, education, awareness, all sorts of needs begin to become much more apparent to us. And we can help those to change and possibilities then start to grow and people begin to flourish. It's often right under our noses. We think too dramatically about how we feed sometimes, but a lot of the time, it's the quality of the relationship. And I'd like you to have a look um, at two paintings again to do with this miracle of the multiplication of the loaves from the Gospel. And the first gives a lovely, clear picture, a wonderful, deliberately colourful impression of the central figure of Christ himself. So we have that Eucharistic picture where Christ presides over uh, his family, the Church, and those who are closest to him, the Apostles, those who are gathered around that first uh, Eucharist, the Last Supper. But what then happens is what is actually being given to us to, um, to carry on from these uh, original days when all this was instituted and given to us. We have Christ as the starting point. But really, he's surrounded by these um, young looking figures, these smaller figures, because they're bringing a sense of humility and awe and reverence into what they're receiving. Hence the childlikeness, the smallness of the characters there. And those disciples are, are you, they're me. Uh, Simon would have said something similar in the church this morning, that it's the people who are being fed that are then being asked to feed the world into which we are sent. That's the heart of Christ's call to his church. And in that call which comes to all of us as Christian disciples, we can hear 
or perhaps hear Christ saying, it's about a work of cooperation. Will you work with me? So it isn't simply receiving, uh, going home and letting Christ do it all himself later on. Being baptised, confirmed and receiving communion is about being sent out to do this with and for Christ himself. That's the heart of discipleship and we can see that feeding beginning in that picture. Now just turn your eyes to the second um, picture, a very different picture in, in many ways. It's a much more modern picture, but he has a lovely gaze of uh, a child, a young boy, and he's looking with this childlikeness. That's the reason for um, the age profile there, really, to have some sense of humility and wonder. Look at the way in which he's gazing at the bread. It's a gaze of wonder and of humility, of childlikeness, which all of us are called to bring into the Eucharistic life when we receive the gift of Christ um, himself. But also notice the way in which Christ's hands are both uh, embracing, they're very present, they're blessing and they're sending us on our way. He's sending the child off into the heart of the world, into the heart of the disciples, into the heart of those people who need to be fed. Blessing and sending. Well, that's the, the main act of Christian worship. We are blessed and sent to feed. And you can see it in this beautiful picture inspired by the language of today's gospel. So the more we approach with humility, in time, for real, physically, the more we are likely to know what it is that we receive with awareness and thanksgiving that we then long to take out into our neighbourhoods in countless ways, to feed them in all manner of ways, which our forthcoming discipleship programmes will help us to understand for ourselves. I'm going to use a simple um, affirmation of faith, which is um, again available on the words on the screen today, uh, and it talks about the language of trust, and trust leads to humility, which leads us to knowing what it is that we're being fed with in order to feed the world with that which we uh, believe. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, who made all things? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed the world? We believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us pray for the life of the church, those parts of the church slowly beginning to regather, those parts of the church still dispersed in our own homes and households, waiting for the right times into which we will feel right to be able to gather once again. But wherever we are, let us pray for the church, wherever it may be. Let us pray in thanksgiving for the way in which the church is continually fed through the gift of Christ's own life, that we may become what we receive and thereby feed each other and feed the needs of real human hunger in the world in which we are blessed and sent to serve. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we begin to look ahead to the beginnings of a new discipleship programme, both online and in written form, and eventually in small uh, gatherings when that becomes possible, for the continued ways in which we will bring to the surface those particular gifts which are ours alone, that we are fed by, feed others with, and fulfil this beautiful picture of Christ's own calling to feed the world into which we live. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we pray for the peoples of this our world, for our own nation as it continues to uh, take careful steps towards uh, increasing easing of lockdown. For those who continue to be especially vulnerable. 
We pray especially for those who continue to work in areas of education and cultural awareness, for those who work in our region's hospitals, care and nursing homes, for all those who seek the health of our neighbourhoods. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray especially for those who have lost relatives to this strain of the coronavirus. We pray for the people uh, of Pendle, uh, suffering from this uh, outbreak of this virus at this time. We pray for those nations throughout the world where it seems that the virus uh, is spiralling out of control. We pray for the needful gifts of patience and wisdom to be able to interact again in the right time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And so we offer these and all our prayers for those needful gifts of what it means to be fed by the continued outpouring of Christ's gifts into the life of his church, that we in turn might feed one another and nourish the world in all goodness. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And so Christ, who is the bread of life himself, feeds his church with that which gives us peace, and so the peace of the Lord be always with you. I'm going to sing um, a new hymn uh, today. The words will appear on your screen in a moment's time. Uh, the hymn is called Where is Bread? But it's set to a familiar tune, so you'll hopefully be able to find a way of fitting the tune into the, the language. It's a new hymn which beautifully fits the theme of all that we've been exploring through the language of the Gospel here um, today.
Heavenly Father, may the gifts of this bread and this wine nourish us in the beauty which is the life of your Son, the bread of life, that we in turn might feed ourselves and each other as disciples within your church, and from the church nourish the world with that same life. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Christ Jesus, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels for ever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we praise and bless you, loving Father, through Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. And handing the cup to his disciples, he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory. And let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen throughout the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the whole company of heaven to feast at your table in the kingdom which you taught us to pray for. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, almighty Father, for ever and for ever. Amen. And so rejoicing in the perpetual outpouring of the gift of bread, the extension of the miracle, of the multiplication of the love, we pray together, as Christ himself taught us to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and for ever. And we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. And though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. And Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. And this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, and blessed are those who are called to his supper. And Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. So we use the prayer sent for today, this eighth Sunday um, of the Trinity, where we uh, give thanks to God for all we have received and all that we seek to become in our love for uh, Christ's world. Let us pray. Strengthen for service, Lord, the hands that have taken holy things. May the ears which have heard your word 
be deaf to clamour and dispute. May the tongues which have sung your praise be free from deceit. May the eyes which have seen the tokens of your love shine with the light of hope. And may the bodies which have been fed with your body be refreshed with the fullness of your life. Glory to you for evermore. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those people whom you love and pray for today and forevermore. Amen. And go in peace to love and serve the Lord in all people and in all places. In the name of Christ.